So we'll continue on with uh, word problems where we have to set up a system of equations to solve. So let's just start with number one. Joe bought 15 items for $135. If the 15 <laughs> items consisted of notebooks that cost $4.50 and calculators that cost $12 each, uh, how much or how many of each did he buy? Well, when we deal with these, uh, we as usual, need to make sure we define what variables we're going to use and what they represent. So go ahead and write that down, please. This is one thing that I don't see enough of you doing, defining what your variables mean. You can use any variables that you want. I'm going to use x to represent the number of notebooks and y to represent the number of calculators. And so we're going to set these type of problems up with uh, two, two equations. One that represents the total equation. And if you think back to the uh, chicken-pig problem, it, that would be similar to the total equation that we did in that one as well, where we were keeping track of a total number of animals. Well, in this one, we're keeping track of the total number of items. And so I don't know how many notebooks I have, and I don't know how many uh, calculators that I have, but I do know that I have 15 altogether. So that's where x plus y equals 15 comes from. And then we have, <coughs> as I'm showing you where all that stuff came from, uh, a cost equation, which involves all of the money amounts. And this would be like uh, the leg equation in that chicken and pig problem, where chickens have two legs and pigs have four legs, and it was... <coughs> 2x plus 4y equals, I think it was 84 altogether. Well, in some respects, this is similar to that. And uh, we don't, once again, we don't know how many notebooks we sold or calculators, but we know that notebooks cost $4.50. That's where I got the 4.5x. <clears throat> we know that calculators cost $12. That's where the 12y comes from. And if we take the number that we sold of each and multiply them by their corresponding costs, we know that altogether, uh, it costs $135. So in some respects, these type of problems are very similar to that chicken-pig problem that we did uh, a couple of lessons ago. So from here, we have a system of <laughs> equations. And uh, for some of you, you may want to use uh, elimination. Others of you, you may want to use substitution. It doesn't matter. It's at this point, you have a choice. So I want you to take it from there and solve that system of equations. From, from most of you. Now, uh, you could use either elimination or substitution. I'm going to use substitution on this one. A lot of times, I do think substitution is easier. Um, I think most of you ended up using elimination, but it does not matter. So using substitution, I would have something like this. I use a distributive property, combine like terms, subtract 180 from both sides, divide both sides by negative 7.5, and I get x equals 6, and 6 being x, that tells me that that's how many notebooks we have. And then to me, it's easiest to go back to here or here to figure out how many uh, calculators there would be from there. But obviously, there would be 9. And so, make sure you answer the question. Uh, he bought 6 notebooks and 9 calculators. All right, let's go to number 2. Naomi raised $24 by selling 40 baked items for the math club. She sold cookies for 50 cents each and brownies for 75 cents each. How many of each did she sell? So much like in the last one, we're going to have a total equation that keeps track of uh, how many brownies and cookies were sold all together, and then a money equation or a cost equation. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to set up your system, and then I want you to stop because I need to make sure everybody has a correct e system before we can move on from there. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to get your system set up. I needed to make sure that everybody read 50 cents as what it is, 50 uh, hundredths of a dollar. So make sure that in that cost equation that um, you have decimals in there. 50 cents is written that way, 75 cents is written that way compared to $24. All right, take it over from there. Solve it and answer the question. Autumn, what'd you get on this one? We got 24 cookies and 16 brownies. And the, 
and that is what most people got on that one. Uh, substitution might be easier, but that's entirely up to you. I'm going to, uh, from this point on, I believe I stick with uh, elimination method. So I multiplied the bottom one by 100 to get rid of all my decimals. And I multiplied from there the top one by negative 50 so that my x's were eliminated. And once again, it doesn't matter whether you use substitution or elimination, whatever works best for you. I end up with 16 brownies right there. And I'm going to go back to the x plus y equals 40 uh, to solve for the number of cookies. And obviously, there are 24 cookies and 16 brownies. Any questions with number two? All right, let's go to number three. Number three is slightly different in some respect. Uh, Hannah has some nickels and dimes. The value of the coins is $1.65. There are 12 more nickels than dimes. And I think there might be a, is there a typo in the notes? Yeah. Okay, it's supposed to say 12 more nickels than dimes. I remember the teacher who does the notes let me know that there was a typo there. So make sure you fix your notes to represent or look like this problem right here. There are 12 more nickels than dimes. Now, we still want a total equation and we still want a, a cost equation. But the total equation is slightly different. So before I even ask about that, um, we know that there are 12 more nickels than dimes. Now, I'm not trying to make $1.65 right now, but could somebody give me an example of a representation that shows 12 more nickels than dimes? Don't make it $1.65. Don't think. Yes. 12, 12 nickels and zero dimes. Let me ask you this, Sam. What would I have to do to the dimes to make them an equal number of coins? Not amount. Equal number of coins. No, no, no. What would I have to add to the dimes to make it an equal number of coins? Add 12 dimes. Add 12. Okay, you'll see what I'm, why I'm doing that in just a second. Somebody give me another uh, number of coins where there will be 12 more nickels than dimes. Okay, what would I have to do to the number of dimes to make it an equal number of coins? What would I have to do? Add 12. So what's happening here is if I want to, as far as the number of coins goes, in order to keep that equal or equivalent, I have to add 12 to the number of dimes. And for some of you, that doesn't make a lot of sense if I had not gone through that, but that's really what is happening. So what that does is that leads us to our first equation, and I'm using N for nickels and D for dimes, defining my variables. So... That means that my first equation is n equals d plus 12. Because in order to keep them to be an equal number of coins, I have to add 12 onto the number of dimes to make that happen. Now, for my money equation, obviously, that should look like this. Now, why would it look like that? Well, the decimal value of a nickel is 0 0.05, and the decimal uh, amount for a dime is 0 0.10, and altogether there were uh, a dollar. There was a total value of a dollar sixty-five. So there's our system. So you have two choices. You could use elimination, which it's set up for elimination, or you could put the first equation in standard form and then use substitution. It does not. Or excuse me, elimination. It does not matter. Solve it, please. That. All right, I am, and once again, substitution might be easier, but I'm going to use elimination, so I'll put the first equation, that total equation, in standard form. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 100 so that I no longer have any decimals, and that looks a lot nicer now. And then from there, I'm going to uh, multiply the top one by negative 5. And I went to a new screen because I was out of room there. And uh, at this point, my n's are eliminated. Solve for d. I have seven dimes. Go back to uh, the simplest equation to figure out the number of nickels. And that would be 19 nickels and seven dimes. All right, I want everybody to read number four. 
and set up the system that you think you should use to solve it. Don't go beyond that yet. So we have our total equation, and I'm, just like most of you, I'm using Q and D for the, uh, for the uh, things or the items that we have within this problem. So Q plus D equals 20, and then the cost equation, don't forget the money of values. Now, notice that I went ahead and multiplied everything by 100 because that's pretty easy to do in your head. That way I could cut down on a step. So that's why I don't have 0.25 Q plus 0.10 D equals 3.05. I went ahead and multiplied it by 100. All right, take it over and finish it from there. I'm going to multiply the top one by negative 25. And once again, substitution might be easier for some of you. I'm going to leave the bottom one alone since I'd already multiplied by 100. My Q's are eliminated. Solve for the dimes. I get 13. Substitute that back into the easiest equation to solve for the number of quarters. And obviously, that would be 7 quarters and 13 dimes. All right, let's go to the back side of the notes. We've got two problems left, and here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you seven minutes to work on both of those with your shoulder partner. Here's what you should do. Read the problem independently. Write down the system. Quickly compare your system with your shoulder partner. Then solve it independently, and then go back with your shoulder partner and compare answers, and then do the same thing with number six. Okay? You have seven minutes. Go. number six. For number five, I'm using A for adults, C for children. Total equation would, of course, be A plus C equals 411. We don't know how many adults or children are there, but we do know that there are 411 people uh, at the play. For the cost equation, um, I went ahead and put it right here with decimals because I like, like to just jump straight from there to uh, the non-decimal version by multiplying everything by 100. So I'm going straight to that. From there, I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 100, which is what most of you did. And um, from there, my A's are eliminated. And then I add straight down, divide both sides by negative 25, and that's the number of children who are there. And go to the simplest place to substitute that into to find the number of adults. And so that is how many adults and children. Number six, really the same exact uh, type of problem. I'll use A for adults, C for children. Here is my total equation. There is the original um, cost equation. I'm going to quickly multiply it by 100 to give me this. And then I'm going to multiply the uh, top equation by negative 200, add straight down. I get this. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 125. I noticed that some of you did leave it, everything with decimals, and so you ended up with decimals in here, which is fine, whatever works for you. So 31 children and 135 adults. Any questions? All right, we are finished.